first hardcore show I ever saw was a punk rock show. And uh, I'd have to say the, the first punk rock show that really raised the bar and, and was more of a hardcore show would have to be the Bad Brains. I miss CBGB's most because I grew up there. Um, I had been going to CBGB's since me and Hilly were talking about it before he died. I had been going there since like 1973 or 74 before there even was the thought of punk rock. You know, it was like pre-punk. And of course they didn't want to let me in because I was like seven or eight or whatever years old, but I was with my aunt, my aunt Denise, who started the stimulators. So Hilly and the, the everybody else, they let, all right, is your nephew, and they let me in and, and that was it. You know, there was no turning back. So I, I had literally been going there my whole life. That shit was like an extension of my apartment. I, to me, the whole experience of being in the mosh pit was just a good time. It was like a football game minus the ball. But to say who was the greatest slam dancer, I don't know. I didn't spend much time checking out the other guys on the dance floor. I just was fucking taking people out, trying to see how many people I could take to the ground with me when I dive off the stage, find somebody that I didn't like and backfist them in the face as I was going by them, you know? But the funny shit is, was as violent as it looked in the old days, there really wasn't that many actual fights unless somebody who was like an outsider or an asshole kind of got out of line. You know, like somebody who didn't know what was going on, someone who just wound up at the show and was like trying to get into it on the dance floor and like punches a chick or some shit because they don't know any better. They're like, I'm slam dancing, you know, and they get the shit beat out of them, whatever. But it was more fun, you know. Oh, for fuck's sake. Man. Yeah, I lived in a lot of squats. Fuck, man. Which one, uh, you know, I lived, dude, I lived on, in squats on the Lower East Side back in the day. I hitchhiked out to California when I was 15. I was living in, a, in an abandoned brewery. First, I was living in an air vent in the brewery. Then I, was, then I moved into an actual uh, a vat that they used to keep the beer stored in. Like, I mean, I, yeah, I've lived in squats. <laughs> I've lived in, you know, and I left home when I was like 14, man. You know, you, anywhere that keeps you out of the rain is, is somewhere good. Anywhere that keeps you out of the cold wind, you know. There's more than three, I can't name three, uh, but I'd say that the bass players who influenced my style the most would have to be Daryl from the Bad Brains, Geezer Butler from Black Sabbath, and Lemmy from Motorhead. Um, there are a lot more bass players that influenced me. I, I was saying before to you, um, Kronos from Venom, I think was one of the most underrated bass players out there. You know, people just kind of laugh at Venom. You know, um, so, and, but then again, there's, a, you know, I have a lot of other influences, you know, Jaco Pastorius was one of my favorite bass players, you know, uh, I actually have one of his basses, um, Stanley Clark, you know, there was a lot of guys that were, that, that I used to listen to and bug out on their playing, you know, actually me and Mackie used to, he used to turn me on to a lot of crazy fusion shit, you know, that's one thing, I really appreciate musical relationships with people when you can actually turn each other on to artists and, and players and stuff. And um, I tried to bring all that stuff together into my, my thing. Like, I mean, you know, like I said, the beginning to we gotta know, like, I, I would have never got that from like Motorhead. That's definitely more, uh, you know, like a fusion-y, bad brainy type of a, Thing. So, you know, I, that, that was my whole thing about hardcore was taking other influences, making it yours. And the idea of hardcore was to make it hard, to make it harder, more punch, like the refining it till it's the hardest it can be. And I always felt that it doesn't just have to be this style. Like what we did, I thought of was hardcore punk, you know. Hardcore is about taking shit to, a, to another level, whether it's fucking... MMA or fucking skating or whatever. It's just about pushing the shit. That's why, you know, like I play a lot of different styles of music, but I don't really feel like I have played unless I'm playing hardcore. Like I can play a set of this or a set of that and walk off stage and be like, yeah, all right. But if I don't walk off the stage like sweaty and like I just had a fight, I don't feel like I really got my shit off.
uh, one show that I'll never forget was at the Santa Monica Civic Center. Bad Brains, Discharge, Circle Jerks, Bad Religion, and The Farts. The Farts was Duff McKagan's old punk band. And that was, uh, that was a fucking amazing show. It was the first time I had ever seen a show that big, like a hardcore show where there was like more than a few hundred people. Like, you know, you'd never, you know, you'd go, a hardcore gig at most, it was a couple hundred people, two, maybe three. But this was huge, like three circle pits going on. You know, I would dive off the stage and roll across people's heads for like 30, 40 feet before I'd even start tumbling into the crowd. It was nuts. Uh, that, that was one of the shows that really stuck out. Uh, another show that will always stick out in my memory was Negative Approach at CBGB's. I don't remember what year it was, but it was, you know, they had only been to New York a couple of times. And I just remember the fucking pylon of people on stage. Like, you couldn't even see the fucking singer. John was like underneath a pile that was like a. It was, it was a fucking mountain of people. Like, I don't even know where the fucking guitars and the bass player were. They were like up against their amps. It was nuts. And they were still playing, and it was just unbelievable. They were fucking greater. I don't think anybody can put it into words. I think half the people who put it into words fail completely, you know, because they're still so in awe that they don't even understand what the fuck it was. As, as a musician and as somebody who fucking learned how to play bass from watching Daryl, you know, I mean, I, I jammed on them with drums so many times. I played with them at 171A. I was on drums with them when they wrote, we will not do what they want or, or do what they say. I was fucking playing with them. Those guys were one of the biggest influences on me as far as musicians that I grew up with, you know, and, and would be at their practices, listening to them play, would be watching Daryl's thumping, really paying attention to what Earl was doing. The only other person who really focused on Earl like me was Mackie, and obviously that paid off. But um, that was my... Those were the guys I really learned more from than anybody else because I was, again, I was already a musician, so I was actually learning from them. Like, I was actually picking something up. I wasn't just like, oh, wow. The stimulators were supposed to play with Sid Vicious at Max's, and uh, I, he died. <laughs> That's the show that I fucking wish I would have seen. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I mean, the people are always going to listen to hardcore music, but the spirit of what it was died a long time ago. I think when the internet happened, music lost its integrity in a lot of ways because instead of there being a direct evolution from one thing to another, you could just search it, cut it, copy it, paste it. You don't really have to have any lineage, no integrity, nothing connecting you to the past. Uh, that has its benefits, but I think it has more downsides to it. It's like music was a evolutionary thing, and people forget that now. I mean, like, I'm really happy and, I don't want to say proud, but I'm really, you know, having been around through the 70s era stuff, it makes me appreciate, like, I... I you know, those memories, man, Max's and all that shit back in the old day, you know, fucking the dolls and this and that, you know, I'm, that was my childhood. But those early 80s, that was my, that was me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was a kid during those days when other kids were, like, going to school, had to get home, do their homework, playing with their fucking, their toys and shit. I was at Max's. I was at CB's, you know. And uh, by the time... 80 happened, I was already like living in squats and on the, doing the street thing. So hardcore was really an expression of me, of my adolescence, of my teenage angst and, and the aggression of the streets. And you know, it was such a different fucking place, man. It's like, you know, you were a hardcore kid back then, you were risking getting jumped, period. You know, people take this shit for granted now. You know, like people with tattoos and all this shit in their faces, man, back then you would have got fucked up for looking that way. And it's like now I see, you know, it's just like so mainstream now. I feel like, you know, people don't even realize 
hardcore, that little scene down on Avenue A that we had has influenced mainstream culture more than fucking just about anything, and people don't even realize it. You know, every fucking jerk off has stretched out earlobes and shit through their nose and tattoos on their fucking neck now. And that wouldn't be the case if hardcore wouldn't happen.